Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter, and today I'm going to show you how to use IHTV and vinyl, so heat transfer vinyl and your adhesive vinyl, in the most efficient way possible. So when you're cutting projects, how to make sure that we can maximize these scraps for future use. And also in the process, just make it easier on us when we're weeding. So, all right, let's get started. I am so excited because I feel like sometimes, you know, we get so caught up in doing it just the way we've always seen others do it. Um, and sometimes, you know, when you stumble upon a mistake, you discover something amazing. Or in my case, it, it started out that way, which is how I got my original hack, which where we overcut on HTV. And if you remember that, and I actually cut out an example today, I will be showing my mat. So I've cut things in advance. I wanna show that all to you so that you're convinced that this is the best way possible. Okay, so back to the HTV hack. If you remember, it came about because uh, another creator had done an owl mandala. And I wanna say it took her, I think she said it took her like four hours to weed. And um, it took me uh, about five minutes. And really it's more about cleaning it up because with the mandala, it's all connected. It's one piece with lots of little pieces that you need to weed out. When you go to overcut it, so basically instead of cutting it on a heat transfer vinyl setting where we're gonna be weeding, we're gonna cut it on, in my case, I cut it on glitter cardstock. So what happens is you end up just pulling off the one piece that's all attached. And so everything that you would have weeded stays on the mat, just falls off. I'm gonna show it to you. I know it sounds crazy, but let's do that one first because I feel like if you see that one, then you'll understand what we're doing. So I'm gonna go into images and I'm just gonna type in mandala. And I had done this earlier, this is the one that I cut. So when we're looking at this file in particular, you can see that <clears throat> all the black is actually what we're gonna be doing, right? And I feel like sometimes when it's in a different color, it's just easier for us to understand. So the purple is what we're gonna put on a sweatshirt, let's say, okay? So all of the clear pieces are pieces that we would have spent time weeding, right? So um, in this first like circle layer, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pieces that we're weeding plus this little circle, right? So this mandala is technically two pieces. If you see all the purple right here is all connected and then we've got a random circle just kind of in the middle. Because it's just two pieces, I'm willing to cut it this way. Um, so instead of weeding the eight pieces here and then however many pieces in that second, in that second circle and then that last circle, right? Let me show you what that's going to look like. So I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to make this bigger so that you can see what happens. So what I did was, um, you know, I'm cutting HTV, so iron on vinyl, heat transfer vinyl. And instead of cutting on that setting, I cut it on glitter cardstock. So give me just one second so you can see my face. We can still talk. <clears throat> I cut it here and I didn't remove it from the mat yet. I did cut it on my Cricut Venture, so it's humongous. All right, so let's peel this thing off. So what I like about this technique is, one, it helps us um, use the, the remaining scraps. I mean, this is like, this is as efficient as can be, right? You can still have something cut right here, something cut all the way to the edge if you really wanted to. Um, so I like that right off the bat because I'm not trimming it. And usually when I'm trimming it, um, I'm not as efficient, right? Because I'm going to be really quick. I'm going to cut around. I'm going to miss some of the pieces that could have been saved. All right. <clears throat> so here's the magic. Remember, we would normally, at this point, you would pull this off and then you would start doing this, which, right, we could, um, let me make sure I'm weeding the right parts. We would start weeding this, for example, right? But instead, because I overcut this, I cut this on glitter cardstock setting, okay? Everything that I would have weeded will stay on the mat. And look it, this is ready to press. So I'm gonna flip this over because we cut shiny side down, right? So you can see that reflection that this is the shiny side up now. So the other piece that we're missing is that little circle, right? Because it's only one other piece. It's not a big deal, and I'm just going to pick this up. And so when we go to put this on our sweatshirt or whatever we're putting it on, 
we're going to have to place that circle there. All right, let me move this now out of the way and let's talk about this a little further. So, um, let me just grab a sweatshirt because I feel like a lot of times people have a hard time just listening and understanding like how how to how to still um, iron this on. Okay, so we always put shiny side up when we're uh, when we go to press it, right? And the easy way for you to remember that is that the shiny side is basically the transfer sheet, right? Normally we would have a bigger piece. Uh, normally we would have something that looks like, let's say this. And this is probably more familiar, right? We've got all the pieces on there. This is all sticky. And then we kind of like place it down and then we iron, right? You're still going to do that here. The sticky or the, the shiny side is still on here, so it's protecting the vinyl from the heat. So what you're gonna do is basically you're gonna press. So put your press down for 10 seconds, whatever. And when it's ready, um, when you take off the, the heat press, you're gonna still peel off this shiny layer. <clears throat> you're gonna pop it up and you're gonna peel it off and it's gonna come off like it did before. We're just not used to seeing that carrier in the cut shape. But look, we didn't weed at all and it was ready to press. All right, makes sense? Okay, now I'm gonna take it a step further. So let's flip this back. And, <clears throat> all right, let's. Okay, so now I'm gonna make my face a little bit smaller. Now, okay, so that I have been doing for quite some time, right? Um, but this only works when, you know, everything's connected. Otherwise, you're going to be individually placing things. Like, for instance, if we did um, the useless crafter, the word crafter in my logo, which I think you can see right there, is it's individual letters. Then if we did it this way where we overcut, then you would need to place each individual letter down. And we don't want that because, uh, you know, it's nice when it's on the transfer sheet. You know, it's going to line up straight, all that good stuff. All right but I still think that there's a better way to cut it. All right, I'm going to flip my, um, let's go to a new screen. And okay, so hopefully I've convinced you that for sometimes like um, in for particular projects, you're going to want to overcut like this to save time on weeding. But now that I had that in my bag, I recently was on the Crafty Challenge uh, given by the Crafty Brick. And so what she does is basically her contest is she sends the creators a box with the final project and all the ingredients, right? So all the pieces that you need to make the project. And um, you're basically going head to head with someone. And uh, a, really the most, compo the, the, the most important component is how fast you can do it. So for me, when we were doing a timed contest, I really wanted the machine to cut for me um, and do as much prep work as I can. And then while I was doing that, I realized, oh my gosh, this is the way we should be cutting H2B all the time. All right, so let's, I'm gonna show you a project. Now you may, I, I mean, I think it's getting really popular right now that when you're reading something like a bunch of words, uh, a lot of times people want to put a square around it or a rectangle around it so that you're not weeding like one big thing and you're, you know, it's kind of hard to weed small letters and this way it's a little bit easier. All right, so it's kind of along those lines, okay? So here's a project. Let me, uh, and this project, I'm gonna link it in the description. You can go and download this project, okay? All right. What I did for this one is, and let me make this a little bit smaller. You can see that we've got a red component. We've got two pieces of black. We've got a, a light green and a dark green, right? And so normally when you cut this project, um, you would just trim it. You'd have like weird X scraps left over, right? Um, but this is what I want us to always do when we're cutting h 2 or vinyl from now on, okay? So this is all the red. I want you to go and create an offset. And so here's our offset, it's in black, right? Um, we're gonna cut this on h 2 
but try to follow along with me, okay? We're going to duplicate that offset. For me, it was duplicating it so that we had four layers, okay? All right. I promise you, stick with me. <laughs> we're going to grab all of these and we're going to go to um, a line and we're going to center it. Then you're going to attach it. Okay. So when we attach it, let's look at this tab. Okay. I'm going to move the actual image up to the top and I'm going to change this just so that we can actually see the color. I'm going to change it to a purple. All right. So now we see this. The summer is so sweet with the watermelon, right? And with our offset. The offset, though, we have four layers of it, okay? I'm just going to remove all of this right now. When we go to cut this, because we've attached it, what's going to happen is let's go to the make it. Um, don't save. And let's look what, let's see what our mat looks like, okay? All right, so this is what our mat looks like. We're going to mirror it. Okay, when we go to cut this, it's basically going to cut the HTV once, right? And then the offset is going to be cut four times. So what we're doing is we're basically telling the machine cut the offset four times. When it cuts four times, we're going to be able to peel it off the mat. Why do we want to do this? Because normally if we have this on the mat and we don't have the offset, you would have to trim it to save the excess, right? And if you don't trim it and you start weeding it, then everything that you read is wasted material, okay? So we're going <laughs> to, um, let's just go through the steps and then I'm going to actually show you what the cut pieces look like and why you're going to love it, okay? So we're going to click everyday iron on. So when you click that, it's going to, it's going to cut the, the words in the watermelon once. It's going to cut the offset four times. Okay, so let's flip this screen, and I'm going to show you what the final looks like. And I would have never done this before. It's just because I was in this contest, and I was trying to think outside the box to see, like, how can I be really fast? So let's look at a couple of things. Okay. So let's, I'm just going to peel off this one. So keep in mind the watermelon, right? So here's my watermelon. I, the smaller piece, right? The outside is cut four times, so it just came off the map. I have all the excess here that I can still reuse for scrap, right? And let me bring this back, okay. I'm gonna weed it so you can see it. Um, and I did everything in black just because I had a lot of black HTV. So don't mind me. We're going to read it and it's, I think it's going to make more sense. All right. So now I didn't have to cut anything. This is reusable HTV. I'm going to put it down next time and I've got all this excess that I can use and it cut really close, right? So I'm going to be super efficient with my scraps. All right. So let's pull that one off. And this. So these are all pieces we're going to read, and I think it's going to make a lot of sense once we get there. All right, here's the next piece. This one, I did it the same way, but it didn't come off as easily, but it's still pretty easy right now. So here is my excess that I can reuse, super efficient, right? Here is the summer is so sweet with the watermelon. We're going to weed it so you can see what that looks like. Okay. Let's do some more. This is just the black watermelon seeds, okay? The other thing that... Um, one of the benefits of doing it this way is, you know, sometimes it's really hard to see on this sheet. And sometimes when I go to trim it before I weed it, I end up cutting into my project. And that's super annoying and super inefficient because sometimes you have to recut re everything um, and use even more HTV or more of your material. And we all know that's true. All right, this one I didn't overcut. So I want to show you what that looks like. So we're going to leave that there. I've got like all these different things because I wanted to show you. Okay. 
And then I've got one more watermelon right here. The watermelon rind. So again, this is my scraps, super efficient because it's got everything still on there. Okay, let's go to weed and I have some in color, which might help. Okay, so we're gonna look at a couple of things. All right, let's look at this water. These are the seeds, okay? What I like about doing the offset is that for multiple reasons, let's get this down first and I'm gonna show you. So when you weed this, your whole project is here. We're super efficient, right? Like, look at, this is what we're weeding. Um, I, I didn't have to hand cut it. Um, what's left is super, you know, still a lot of pieces left for the scrap. And what's great is when I go to press this, because this is right here, I probably can press it all. Um, let's say I, I know this is different sizes, but you know what? I have it here. Let's do this. So let's weed this one. And here's our red. See how like we're going to weed it and it's super easy because oops, this piece is still on here. Um, you don't have a lot of the sticky part left too. And like I said, you don't accidentally cut into the watermelon because you're trying to be efficient and then you end up being super inefficient. Okay. Pretend this is already pressed down. Okay. I'm going to bring back my sweatshirt. Move this aside for a minute. Okay. So, pretend this red layer is already pressed, okay? So when I do my next layer, I can do my black. Oops. And... I can do my green at the same time because they're not overlapping. And the benefit of that is if you're not overpressing. Because normally when you think about, you know, this project has a dark green, light green, black, and red. Normally, if you don't do this process, you're pressing four times, right? You're pressing one, all the red, then pressing the dark green, and then the light green, and then the black, you, and you could run into a case where you're overpressing the product, so you ruin your blank, you're overpressing your vinyl. Um, so in this case, we're like really being efficient in a sense that we're cutting down on how many times we're using the heat press, and that's always good. All right, so you could do that, and then you could pull that up. So instead of pressing this, what is that? One, two, three, four, four times, we can maybe press this in um, definitely three times, but we still have this green layer. And let me weave this green layer so you can see what that's like. And again on this one, I mean, I just feel like, you know, the other thing that people do um, is sometimes they will, like I said, put a rectangle around it. So it's a little bit more efficient than just hand cutting it. But with this shape, you can't do that. If you did that, you would um, you would be super inefficient, right? Um, the other thing is, if you try to cut it and not weed off like so much, you run into the possibility of uh, cutting this because you can't see it. It's hard sometimes to see the cut lines on your vinyl. Okay. So you can see this is so much easier to handle, this small piece. And what's left is, you know, all the scraps that you can use, right? Okay, so let me show you. This is normally, I think, what's more popular right now is there's uh, words right here. Oh, you can kind of see it in the thing. I put that rectangle around it because I'll show you what that looks like. Because that's still more helpful than trying to pull off all of this, right? Um, so this makes it easier so you can see your project. But 
I still have to now take my scissors and cut off the rest of this. And it can be, you know, I could have made this rectangle a little bit smaller, but the most efficient way is if I had done the offset because it would have just cut it out for me and it would have popped out. Now I still have to cut it, right? But you can see what I mean now when we're cutting smaller text. <laughs> you want to do that. I, I hope that was helpful. I hope that means, because look at my scrap now. This is all cut. This, because I cut this, I still have to cut this out. It's not as efficient, right? But if you overcut with your layers, look at all our scraps. That's all scrap that you can put down. This is all scrap. It's super, super tight with how much you have left over. So, all right, hit me with the comments, the questions, and I will answer it. I will try to do more to make this a more popular way of doing it, like more the standard. The last thing I want to tell you is there's going to be one more link in the description. Today is May 23rd. The contest is over May 24th. Courtney from The Crafty Brick is giving away a Juliet, a Caesar Juliet cutting machine. I think it's worth about $500. So, um, yeah, I feel like this is one of those contests where like the odds are really, really good. Uh, it's over tomorrow. So hopefully you catch this video, you go and you sign up and be entered in that. I myself will be getting a Julia in the talks with Caesar. So I hopefully will have tutorials and we can learn it together. All right, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much. I hope you subscribe and I will see you guys next time.